We've got um, we've got a line of working up here. Can you help me work out? Can you help me work out what has taken this line to this line? What's been done to both sides? I could. Okay, both sides have multiplied by twenty. I'll say it again. Both sides multiplied by twenty. You can see the twenty that appears here. Uh, twenty doesn't appear on the left hand side. Why is that? What happens on the left hand side? Um, so if it's four, like four and one is one over four. You multiply that by twenty, the four and the twenty cancel out. Fantastic. Pause there before we move on. You can see why there's a twenty over here because the twenty and the four will interact with each other leaving you with 5, and that's what you can see this top has been multiplied by. Do you agree? Oh, yeah. That that's been multiplied by 5, okay? Uh, and the same thing happens here, right? The 20 and this 5 will interact, leaving you with 4, Four, because the 5 cancels. So 4 times 6 is 24. Uh, have a look, she's then, after um, multiplying both sides by 20, she has what? What's going on here? Uh, yeah. What's happening? A few things have shifted around, right? But there's one phrase which captures all of them. Thank you, she's collected like terms. Uh, get, get out of my classroom. All of the A's are all together. The five's gone over the other side. Uh, we've added five to both sides. Why is that? So that's because it's the right. Because it's because it's because we are trying to make A the subject. So you want to get A on its own and then divide it through. Okay. Uh, last one down here, who agrees with this factorization? Yeah. Yeah. Thumbs up. Yeah. Um, you can see Laura helpfully has written down sum to indicate the significance of the negative 3 and product to indicate the significance of the negative 28. And sure enough, negative 7 and positive 4, they do the job. Wonderful. So rule that off. <clears throat> if you haven't already, you can write the questions that we're going to be doing in 702 today, and the heading is solving quadratic equations. Right. Okay, let's transition straight into this. Now, the two review questions I've given you are exactly the lead into solving quadratic equations, because on the first line, you are solving, solving an equation, and on this question here, the second one, that's a quadratic, right? You've got the thing that's squared there, and then off you go. Okay? Now, to make sure you understand what solving quadratic equations means, we need to go back to what solving means. When you see the word solve, when you see the word solve, what words could you substitute? What phrase could you substitute if you didn't have the word solve in the English language? What could you say instead that would get to the same place? And simplify would not get you there. What, what else could you say? What sentence oh, could you evaluate? Say? Evaluate is an interesting one. Evaluate means find the value of. But evaluate what? Like, you can't evaluate an equation. You have to evaluate an expression. What are you trying to evaluate? Hey. Suppose you're trying to evaluate the Prony rule. That's one thing you could do. Evaluate the Prony rule would be a reasonable synonym. Is there anything else we could say? Let me write an equation on the board for you. It's an equation you've seen from earlier this year when we um, were looking at perfect squares. See this equation here, right? This equation is really special because no matter what numbers you put in for A and B, you can make them 1 and 5 or 3 and 100 or negative pi and 8 million. No matter what numbers you put in, this statement will be true. But this statement up here, this equation, is not always true. It's only true sometimes. It's only true when A is a particular value. And that's what solve actually means. Solve means find solutions. But find solutions, like what are solutions? Solutions are values for pronumerals, like, like A, right? Values for pronumerals. Ooh, that's a U. Yeah. That. Now, what do we want? We want this equation to be true, right? So they make the equation true. Some equations aren't true. You can write an equation that isn't true. For example, this is an equation. 
that's not true, right? But we want to make this equation true rather than this one. Uh, our fancy technical way of saying that, make the equation true, because that's a bit colloquial, is we say that that is called satisfying the equation. Satisfying. Without the equation. Okay, so let me just review, right? If you get asked to solve, what you're trying to find is a solution, or many solutions, as the case may be. What are solutions? It's A equals something, or X equals something, that satisfies the equation and makes it work, okay? Now, please note, have a look at question two that you did five minutes ago. You cannot solve this. Solve doesn't make sense as a verb to go along with this expression because it's not an equation. Do you notice that? Like, how do I know it's not an equation? There are no equal signs. It's not equal to zero, it's not equal to five, it's not equal to a pineapple, it's not equal to anything. So there's nothing that can make that true, right? Um, so therefore you can't solve something like that. 